the Boss Man Show. We got our wide receiver out of Atlanta, Georgia, Love Joy, Western Kentucky Hilltopper. We got him here on the show, Dayton Wade. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Good. I'm doing great. Uh, just got uh, out of PRP earlier, uh, heading into a lift later on. You know, Relaxing. My downtown right now. No doubt, brother. Let me ask you this, Dayton. Um, you got a lot of offers, man. What was about Bowling Green, Kentucky, and the Hilltop was made you say, hey, let me go to over Georgia State, the other schools who, who wanted you, man? Really? It was crazy because I was getting pressured into signing early. Like, a lot of schools wanted me to sign early. But I was like, nah, like, I feel like I should wait it out. And the only school that respected my decision and was like, yeah, wait it out, you know what I'm saying? see everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, they was the only school that actually was, like, cool and comfortable with me doing that. So that just stuck in my back of my head. And then, so when it came down to signing period, I was already, I took a visit here. When I got here, I was like, as soon as I got here, I was like, oh, yeah, this is, this is, this is a nice little campus. This, this is what I need. Like, I ain't want to be around too much. I want to, like, get away but still be around something because this is a college town. So it's, it's, it's stuff going on here, but it ain't as much as it would have been in a bigger city. So I just felt like it was the perfect place for me. Coach Ellis, he he talked my head off, telling me uh, how this, how well, what we finna show y'all this upcoming year, how much we throw the ball, how much like all these explosive opportunities we get, and how I would be a perfect player for the offense. You know what I'm saying? And y'all just made sense to me. And I was like, we do that. I hear that, man. So it's funny you say that, brother, because I went to Tennessee State for the same reason because I didn't want to be good school in Atlanta. I run around all my homies over on the west side over there. So let me just let me go to Tennessee State three and a half hours away or so and get my education up there. So I feel you, bro. I feel you. It's a little away from everybody. It's a little slow than Atlanta is. So hey, it worked worked out for you and me both, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Great move. Gotta use your head. No doubt. No doubt. And then bro, let me ask you this, man. At what point as a kid, man, did you realize that football is your future? You know, because I know at a certain point of age, playing pop one or little league football, you got to kind of have middle school ball and say, oh, man, I'm pretty good. I'm good at this thing. So for you, at what age did you try to say, hey, football is my life's passion? Well, off rip, I just always knew. Like, when I was little, I was like, oh, yeah, I want to play football. Like, whatever, I was just like, I want to play football. My mom was too scared to let me play. So my first sport I ended up playing was baseball. But my whole heart was like in football, you know what I'm saying? And she finally let me do it. That's when I was eight. And then, well, when I really realized I was good, of course you you do your folks up, throw them up, bust them up, you know, at, at the playground, at school and whatnot. But organized football is different. So I remember when I scored my first organized touchdown, I used to play at Old Nat from College Park. So... First game at old now I scored, I spiked the ball. Uh, my coach ended up making me do push-ups because of penalty-wise. I still remember that to this day. So I rarely celebrate in the end zone just because of that. From way out of, how many years ago is that? 12 years ago, I rarely uh, celebrate just because of that right there. But, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, like, let's go. Like, this it. And then, plus, I, I come from a football family. Like, my dad, he played uh, – football at Michigan when Tom Brady was there and his brother my uncle played in the NFL for the Dallas Cowboys and I think I think the Raiders he ended up winning like uh NFL fastest man back when they was doing that I think he won that like three times so it's just in me I hear that brother now what receivers or receivers do you study on film the most kind of emulate to put in your game I really pick and choose from everybody like but my favorite receiver to watch right now is Stefan Diggs. Well, I, I kind of like Devontae Adams, too. They kind of have, like, the same game, but they just different. And, you know, everybody's different. So everybody has something different to bring to the table. But they both are great at creating separation. And, like, they have great route running and whatnot. And they're, like, strong players. You know what I'm saying? They play, they play with, like, passion and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I really like watching them because they're, they're also smart. You know what I'm saying? And that's, like, a big part of the game. Instead of, it ain't just running routes and like, you know what I'm saying? It's more to it. So I like watching them. Now, Dave, now, now when, you, when you're in the slot there, when you're out playing X or the Z out there, 
how much you look for kind of just take what is man or zone, you know, because that's a big thing here. Especially if you run an option route, is it man or zone? You run a man route or zone, right? you can get, get your head knocked off. So how do you kind of go about detecting what they in, man or zone there? All right, so every time I line up, I draw an imaginary triangle with three defenders. So those three defenders would generally tell me what what type of, what they're running, man or zone, like depending on the leverage, alignment, you know what I'm saying, things like that. So I, I really just try to draw as many triangles as I can and then look at like ball placement, where the ball is, and you know what I'm saying, tendencies. So really, it, it really, it really be the leverage that give it off, you know what I'm saying? So well, when we in the, uh, so we'll go split. Uh, defenders are typically like, he'll play, he'll show outside, but the safety to have inside help. So, you know what I'm saying? You, you know what it is. It's, it's little things like that. No doubt. And you know what I love to do? Dummy motion. I love, when I, when I play, we played, yeah. we had, we had yeah. dummy motion to make it. Do a, do, a, do, a, do a little trick and see, okay, oh, you playing sides, okay, you playing cover two, you, you okay, he's down, okay, cool. So, yeah, we will always run dummy motion and kind of de- make make him declare what it is. Or, se- or we'll send the back out, okay, you're going to see, he's going to go with you. And if you cut down, okay, we, okay, we, 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 we know what time it is. Okay, cool, we got you. You in zone, sucker, we got you. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that stuff, man. Go ahead, yeah. So, yes, sir. And you know what, Dave? It's funny, man, because that film study piece of it, too. Watching guy, watching your opponents on film, man, getting that tendency, seeing how they uh, level they line up with, man, it's so key, man. And for you, when did you get into watching a lot of film to kind of learn the defense, what they're they doing, trying to do to you, and what they do to other receivers when they play, you playing the X, Y, or the Z, and all that good stuff, brother? So, when I'm watching film, generally what I look for – I do. I do a little quick. I will probably watch ten plays, just watch them, just to see like how they are, just off rip. And then I go back and really watch every play. You know what I'm saying? And I probably watch. I would be like, okay, so we're in this formation, and we're in this. We say we're in the boundary right here. He not playing in the boundary. He always in the field. So he he must be good in space. You know what I'm saying? Like things like that. Like I I, I look for see if they scared. Like you can tell by how somebody tackle if they scared out out there or what type of player they are. Are they physical? Are they just trying to play with their brain? Like you can see all that in the film. Like the film tells it all. The film is you. So whatever you put on film is what I'm seeing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm really like breaking it down. No doubt. For you, you also play teams, man. You punt return and kick return. Tell me about that. What, what do you enjoy about doing those roles as well to being a, a slot receiver out there getting the getting balls and running and making things happen for your team, man? My team, they call me touchdown. Like, they, like I, I tell them nobody rarely, nobody ever calls me by my first name. I be thinking they don't even know my first name, but that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather have a cool cool nickname than, you know what I'm saying, you know about the first name. But punt return, I love it. Because it's like one-on-one, you got to have confidence back there. It's just you and the ball. Like, you got to catch it, and you either got to make some shake or be smart enough to fair catch it. You know what I'm saying? Good, give, your, give your teammate good. Give your team good positioning. And that's like the major part. Like, are you – are you in, are you able to be in control and make great decisions for not just trying to be stingy or anything? Like I like the I, I I'm basically saying like I like the yeah like put it all on me. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I handle that. So kick return, punt return. That's like yeah, guarantee given. Like I'm finna get the ball in my hands. Let's do it. Like I'm finna make something happen. Especially like we need it. I got it. You know what I'm saying? Like so I love that. Now, how much did seeing Devin Hester at the Dome for our Falcons here inspire you to do those roles? That was crazy because, like, seeing Devin Hester growing up, he, you know, he didn't play for the Falcons. He was with the Bears and whatnot. But the things that he was doing, it's like, oh, my God. Like, it's, it's, it's way more ways you can score touchdowns than just, you know what I'm saying, running the ball or passing and catching the ball. So it's like – and he's a very explosive player. So it's like, okay, like I can do that too. Let me go ahead, let me go ahead and step into that role. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's how that goes. 
No doubt. Well, man, excuse me, man. What is your game day week approach, man? So I know you're probably off on Monday. You have a little practice week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, kind of a travel day, walkthrough day. So for you, how do you approach each day of that week to build up sincerities out there to represent your hilltoppers, man, get the job done out there on the field? I typically, so what we do is, uh, so I'm, I'm going to start it from Saturday because, you know, this how I work. So Saturday is game day. Sunday, uh, we'll come in, we'll um, do corrections, uh, treatment, get your body right. You know, after the game, you got little nicks and bruises. You got to get that out of there because Monday we got practice. And, you know, everyday practice come with film and whatnot. So they give you uh, this is what they like to run. This is what we like coming into the week. So, you know what I'm saying, study this, look at this, uh, watch these particular games because these teams are similar to us. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing. Of course, school, you know, you got to do your school work. That's, you knock that out during the day. But when I'm at home chilling, I'm, okay, so this is going to be guarding me. We get the uh, script, get to see, oh, he, such and such from such and such, weighs this much, this tall. We get to see all that. I'm looking. So, and then I'm applying that to the film, seeing how does he, you know what I'm saying, is, is that a factor, things like that. So uh, Tuesday, well, Monday we full pad it. Tuesday we uh, – Tuesday, we in shells, I think. And Wednesday, we, we also in shells. And then Thursday, we in shorts. Thursday, we just cool a little night. Well, not cool because it's serious. Walk through. You know, we getting right because Friday, that's travel day. So we chilling travel day. We still going over things. But, like, it's more of a mental. That's when the more later on in the week, it's more when the mental aspect kick in. But in the beginning of the week, it's the physical like you prepping for like a big play, like you catch the ball, you getting upfield, you trying to score because that's what you're going to do on Saturday. That's what we're doing earlier in the week. Later in the week, we get the mental right. If you resting, you getting your body right. You take you taking more care. You take care of your body the whole week. But later on in the week, you like yeah, it's time to get game ready. So you doing you know you taking those extra steps. You know what I'm saying? And Saturday, it's time to put on. Yeah, representing the ATL and the BG. I see you, brother. I see you doing your thing, brother. I see you, man. So let me ask you this, brother. How did COVID affect you? You know, for me, I'm in my mid-30s, brother. So, you know, for me, it's made me a better leader. It taught me how to be more patient and how to, you know, everything can happen when I want it to happen. So, for you, what did COVID teach you, man? And how did it help you being a, a, your brother in college trying to get your degree, man, dealing with all this and first year around you? COVID taught me a lot, really. Like, uh, a lot was taken away just because of uh, the uh, country being shut down. So it taught me a lot of patience. Like I ended up even getting a tattoo on my uh, left eye that say patience. Cause like, that's really, every, when you really grinding, everything ain't perfect. Like it, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't always glitter. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you really go through ups and downs, you know what I'm saying? But you just gotta stay patient and like keep going and just go through it. That's what I learned. We, Y'all seen our season. We had, a, we had a little rocky season last year, but that was, it was a rocky year. You know what I'm saying? Coming off yeah. of the pandemic, everything opened back up. We ain't been doing nothing like this. Like, ended off on everything on the upscale. And that came with patience. Going through whatever we had to go through. You know what I'm saying? We had to go through that to get where we at right now. So that's really what I got from all of that. Last one I got for dating is this brother, you know, I got a master's degree myself, so you, you get an extra years of eligibility now. Maybe you can leave Western Kentucky with the second degree, and because you know at one point football starts for us all, and we gotta give be live real life at that point. So for you, how important is maybe to push to get that master's degree with the extra year you have eligibility up there at Western? I really want my I'm I'm a I'm a really, 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 really try to get that because I uh my major it's something I want to do, but like as I got here and matured, like into a, you know what I'm saying. Adult, you know, you fresh out of high school, you you still, you know what I'm saying. So as I got older and matured, I wanted to change my majors, but I was so deep into this major, it wouldn't even make sense to not even finish and get this major. So the second major could be my master major is the one I'm really, really trying to do. So like I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, just make sure you get secure for that GRE and G, man. I don't know which one you get to take for your program you want to do the masters in. I, try, I, I wasn't good at taking tests, but I barely passed the, the GRE and the G, man. And I didn't have to get into grad school because I'm not good at tests. I can read a book all day long and read information, but taking them ten hour tests went for me. So I'm gonna tell you, just give give you just a little a little a little advice for you. Get you the GRE and the G, man, prep books now. 
That's why you're playing, so you gotta be prepared for it when it happens. Yeah, Those two fifties add up a lot. Yeah. That two fifty adds up out the wire. I'm telling you. <laughs> But Dave, man, thank you for your time today, brother. I'm happy to talk to you. I'm glad that you're doing well. Representing that slot for WKU and the ATL, man. Henry County, stand up. Love, Joy, stand up. Hudson Ridge Road, stand up. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. I said they found south. Let's get it. So let's, let's know what time it is. Hey, man, be safe, brother. Have a good one, man. Talk to you real soon, my guy.